Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be sharing my favorite romances that are perfect for summer. All right guys, so I recently filmed a companion video to this one, which was fantasy romance books that are perfect for summer. So I will leave that video in the cards and the description, but this video is going to be romance books that are perfect for summer. Whether that be contemporary romance, dark romance, just all of those different romance books other than fantasy romance that I love to read in this summer months. Now, I have a lot of books to get through, so I'm gonna to try to go through this rather quickly, and I have timestamps down below if you are looking for a certain book. There's also affiliate links for every book that I mention. Now, if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram, Goodreads, and Patreon, all linked down below. With all that in the way, let's talk about these romance books that are perfect for summer. So first up we have The Summer We Fell, and this is by Elizabeth O'Rourke. This is actually my favorite book by this author. It is a love triangle, and typically I don't gravitate towards those, but it worked for this book. So we are following this girl that was raised with her parents, and her parents were a little bit neglectful, and she ends up moving in with her boyfriend's parents. Now, her boyfriend's parents are very conservative. I believe the father is a pastor, and they really use um, their son's girlfriend as like help in the house. Like all she is doing is cooking, cleaning, and working while her boyfriend is off at college. Now, when her boyfriend comes back from college, he brings a friend with him, and this friend is this very attractive guy that instantly dislikes our main character. However, that dislike slowly turns into something more, and our main character has to figure out what is she gonna do. Is she gonna stay safe and stay with her boyfriend, with his family that treats her pretty horribly, or is she going to go with this new guy that really doesn't have a lot going for him, it seems? And the story kind of goes from there. I love this. I love this so much. And do I really have to explain why it is perfect for summer? It gives you all of the beach vibes. The boyfriend and the friend are both surfers, so there's a lot of surfing going on in this. And it was just such an amazing story. And next up, we have Between Hello and Goodbye by Emma Scott. Emma Scott is notorious for making me ugly cry, and this book was no different. So in this book, we are following Faith, and she has a really good job in New York City, but she really doesn't know where she's going in life. She's partying a lot, and her friends say, you really need to like get your head on straight, essentially. So she ends up going to Hawaii, and when she gets there, she meets this very attractive firefighter who actually lives on the island. So what then happens is a long-distance romance between the two of them, and this book really shows the struggles with long distance relationships. Even when you really love the other person, there are just so many complications that come from being in a long distance romance. But anyway, a lot of this book is set in Hawaii and that's why I feel like this is the perfect book to read in the summer. It just has those tropical vibes and I really enjoyed this. I actually read this while I was on vacation and it was the perfect time. But anyway, you might cry, but highly, highly recommend. And next up is Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. And I realize I don't talk about Colleen Hoover very often at all on my channel, despite the fact that I've read every single one of her books. And I think I've rated almost all of them at least four stars. And I really enjoyed Heartbones. And this is one I know for a fact I almost never talk about. And I need to start talking about some of these like books that I really enjoy, but I don't know. I just feel like it came out a while ago, so you guys might not be as interested. But this is so good. So we're following this girl that at the very beginning of this book, check trigger warnings, she's going through some very upsetting things and she ends up becoming, she ends up being alone in life. So she goes to this beach to try to kind of get a new start. And she meets this really wealthy guy across the street who ends up being her neighbor. And they hit it off despite the fact that she comes from poverty and he is very, very rich. And they kind of create this like friendship circle with some other people they meet at this beach. And then some mysteries start to be uncovered and we find out things are not quite what they appear. And I just loved this book. Now it does follow younger characters. So know that going in, but I read this book in one sitting and because it all takes place on a beach in a beach town, definitely perfect for the summer. And of course, if we are talking about books during the summer, I have to include Birthday Girl. So mostly just because of the cover of this book, it's our main character, Jordan, getting out of a pool. 
But this is a very angsty romance. And most of the time, our main hero is like thinking about the girl as she's in a bikini outside of his house in the pool. So that is why it is on this list. But this book, for some reason, just really gives me all of those summer feels. It is an age gap dad or ex-boyfriend's dad romance. We are following Jordan and she has been in this relationship with her boyfriend for a while. He treats her pretty horribly. He just kind of neglects her. And on her birthday, he forgets to pick her up from work. So she goes to the movies where she meets this very attractive older guy. They hit it off right away. And soon she realizes that it's actually her boyfriend's dad, who she then finds out she has to move in with because of they end up getting kicked out of their apartment. So super angsty, super just kiss already, but one of my absolute favorite Penelope Douglas books. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to include this book, but I feel like I have to throw in at least one dark romance, and it's Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. There is a certain shark scene in this book that one lives rent-free in my mind, but I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people did not like the shark scene. I was all about the shark scene. But this is following a woman who I think it starts off in Australia, but she essentially steals the identity of men and then just lives life as them until she sleeps with a new guy and steals their identity. So unfortunately, our main character picks the wrong guy and the guy ends up finding out that he has stolen all of her and she has stolen all of his information. So he confronts her and he confronts her on a boat and he uses a very interesting interrogation method involving a shark to confront her, and then a storm hits and the boat ends up capsizing on this island that only has a lighthouse, and there is only one inhabitant, and it's this crazy life lighthouse owner, and essentially he lays down a bunch of rules that the two of them have to follow. So it's really these two people who hate each other are trying to find a way off of this island, and it's really good, kind of dark. The ending has a serious jump scare, but overall, this was a really fun read and I really enjoyed it. And next up, if you're looking for something a little bit spicier over the summer, we have My Killer Vacation and this is by Tessa Bailey. So I picked this up, one, because I thought the colors of the cover were stunning, but also it follows a kindergarten teacher and a bounty hunter. And something about that, I just really wanted to pick it up. So in this story, we are following our kindergarten teacher and she's vacationing, I think in Cape Cod, and she discovers a body. And she is really into true crime, so she becomes kind of like a sleuth or an amateur sleuth and tries to uncover what happened. However, there's also a bounty hunter who is also trying to figure out what is going on. And they end up teaming up together, and it's their romance. Super, super spicy, like most of Tessa Bailey's books, but overall a really fun read. I read this in one sitting, and it's the perfect book just to read by the pool while you're relaxing in the summer. And if you are a fan of dark historical fiction and you like pirates, you have to read Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This was my first Pam Godwin book, and oh my word, is it wild, but so unbelievably good. Between Sea of Ruin and Dark Notes, one of them is my favorite. I always go back and forth on which one, but this is m by far my favorite historical fiction, no question. I love this book. So in this book, we are following Bennett, and Bennett is the child of a lady of society and then a revered pirate. So Bennett has always really looked up to her father. She really didn't want to become a lady like her mother. And after some circumstances cause her to become an orphan, she decides to pick up her father's mantle and becomes one of the most notorious female pirates there is. So we fast forward in time a little bit and Bennett is running away from what we find out is actually her husband, who is another very scary pirate. And in running away from him, she ends up being captured by Ashley, a pirate hunter, who is going to try to use Bennett to lure her husband, who I said she was running away from, in order to capture him and eventually kill him. And it's their story, and it is so good, but it is so dark. But if you like pirate romances, this is one of the best pirate romances. You are on a ship for most of this book, if not almost all of this book. And it is just so, so good. And next up, we have Someone Else's Ocean. This is by Kate Stewart. I feel like this isn't one of her more popular books. However, I really enjoyed it. We're following this woman that ended up vacationing when she was younger at St. Thomas, and she was really close with this little boy whose family also vacationed there. Well, she hasn't been there in a very long time, and when she returns, it turns out that little boy has grown up and he is also vacationing there, but it is after his life has completely fallen apart. 
So he is just trying to get the spark of life back and try to move on from what has happened, while our main character is also kind of doing the same thing. So they are both trying to help heal each other, but also knowing at the back of their minds that they're in St. Thomas on vacation and they probably will not see each other once they leave. So this was a really enjoyable story. I have to admit, it's been years since I've read this, so I forget a lot of like the little details, but I do remember finishing this and being like, wow, that was really good. So also it takes place on St. Thomas, so it has all of those beach vacation vibes, another book that is perfect for the summer. And last up, of course, I have to include Beach Read by Emily Henry. So this is by far my favorite Emily Henry book. I could also have included People We Meet on Vacation in terms of summer. I just feel like Beach Read is so superior. I, I love Beach Read. So this is a very emotional romance, and I feel like not a lot of people know that going in because of the cover, but no, this book made me weep, like cry ugly tears. We're following this girl that at her father's funeral, she finds out that her father was having an affair and she is completely broken. Now, unfortunately, she is a romance author, so finding this out about her father makes it really hard for her to write about romance because she believes her father was living a double life, essentially. So she goes to the beach that her father, her father ended up leaving her house that he was having this affair on a beach, and she goes to that house to try to get back into writing, and when she gets there, she ends up seeing someone that she knew in college who is also a writer, and he is also going through it. So they end up making a deal with each other that they will write in each other's genres, and whoever writes the better book will win. And it's their romance, but oh my gosh, both of these people have had such tough lives. More so the guy, but the girl also just kind of grappling with her father's death and finding out about him after the fact that he's already passed away. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. So if you have not read Beach Read yet, definitely check it out. It definitely has those beach vibes because it is taking place on a beachside town. They're going to the beach. It takes place during the summer. However, just know it is not a super rom-com feel-good type book. It is very much an emotional journey with a little bit of spice. All right, guys, those are some of my favorite romances that are perfect to read in the summer. Please let me know down in the comments below if there is a summer romance that I didn't mention that you think I should either read or other people should check out. And also, I'd like to say a huge thank you to my paladin protectors, Amanda, Erin, Leslie, and Kat. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. And also, thank you everyone who has watched this video. And I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.